Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today in this Eucharistic celebration, our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us that our glory should come when we learn how to serve God and how to serve our neighbor. And so, to prepare ourselves for this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your Spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that He may give us a mind pleasing to You and graciously conform us to Your will. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage for just as you have borne witness to my cause in jerusalem so you must also bear witness in rome the word of the lord thanks be to god keep me safe O god you are my hope keep me safe O god you are my hope Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, My Lord are you, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights of your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> For the past days, we have been hearing the word glorify or glory. Jesus speaking to the Father and telling him, Father, glorify me. Show them your glory. Show them the glory that you gave me. Ano kaya ang ibig sabihin nito? Na kapag sinabi ni Jesus sa Ama, Ama, dakilain mo ako. Ipakita mo sa kanila ang kadakilaan na mayroon ako, na ibinigay mo sa akin na kadakilaan. Ano kaya ang ibig sabihin ni Jesus sa salita na dakilain mo ako? Glorify me. What does Jesus mean? When he says, Father, glorify me. What does the glory of Jesus consist in? Does it mean that Jesus is shown to us as a glorified king for us? To be glorified means to be given strength, to be given power, to be given treasures, authority. But what does the glory of Jesus consist in? Para po sa atin, kapag sinabing, dakilain mo ako, na ako ay dakila, parang ipapakita na ikaw ay may kapangyarihan, ikaw ay mas mayaman, pinakamayaman, Yan, tatawagin kang dakila ka sapagkat may kapangyarihan, may kayamanan, sikat ang pangalan. But what does Jesus mean when He said, Father, glorify me. Show them the glory that You gave me. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus tells us that the glory of Jesus consists in loving us, in praying for us, so that we may become one with the Father and Jesus. 
as the Father and the Son are one, Jesus' prayer is that we also may become one with them. And as the Father loves the Son, they may also be one with us in love. That is the glory that Jesus is speaking of. Ang kadakilaan pala na sinasabi ni Jesus ay hindi matatagpuan sa kayamanan, sa kapangyarihan, sa kasikatan. Hindi pala yon ang sinasabi niyang glorify me. Ang sabi ni Jesus, Panginoon, Ama, dakilain mo ako sapagkat nais ko na ang mga tao ay maging kaisa natin nang sa gayon ay maramdaman nila ang pagmamahalan natin. Yan pala ang kadakilaan na sinasabi ni Jesus. Ang mahalin tayo, ang tulungan tayo, ang ipagdasal tayo sa Ama, at nang sa gayon ay maging kaisa nila tayo. Ang kadakilaan ni Jesus ay hindi makikita sa sarili niya sa sarili niyang kapangyarihan, sa sarili niyang kasikatan, ang kadakilaan ni Jesus na sinasabi niya ay ang mahalin ng kapwa. Diyan makikita ang kadakilaan ni Jesus. In our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, this is also what God and the Holy Spirit was teaching St. Paul when St. Paul was in front being accused by the chief priests and the Sanhedrin, he saw these two camps, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, trying to take over each other to see who is the more glorified, who is the more powerful. Nag-away ang mga Pariseyo, ang mga Saduceyo, dalawang grupo, nag-uunahan, nagpapasikatan, sino ang masikat sa atin? That is why I think it is the action of the Holy Spirit to take St. Paul away from there. And the Lord told him, Take courage, for you will bear witness to me in Jerusalem as well as in Rome. And eventually, St. Paul preached the word in Rome and there offered his life to preach the word of God. That is the glory of Jesus. It does not consist in winning, uh, in, winning in debates, in trying to see who is the more powerful in us, then I will be glorified. No. For Jesus, our glory is in preaching God's word to others, in letting other people feel the love of the Father. That is the glory of Jesus. Pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoong Jesus ngayon na ang kadakilaan ng isang Kristiyano na tagasunod ni Jesus ay hindi makikita kapag ikaw ay sikat na, ikaw ay may kapangyarihan na, ikaw na ang pinakamataas, yan, ikaw na ang dakila. Hindi. Ang kadakilaan ng isang Kristiyano ay makikita kapag ikaw ay marunong ng magmahal sa kapwa, ikaw ay marunong magbigay sa kapwa, kagaya ni Jesus at ng Ama. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we also uh, give a special greeting to our uh, Jesuit uh, brothers and fathers also. Today, we commemorate the 500 years of the conversion of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. 
And if we look at the story of his conversion, he was a soldier. He comes from a rich family. He was looking for power, for influence, for money and treasure. He was fighting as a soldier, looking for glory as a soldier. But then, a cannonball struck his leg. His, faith, his life was changed. And when he was recovering, he cannot even walk. His life was changed. And at that point, Jesus taught him that glory does not consist in seeking power, but glory comes when you learn how to serve others. Today we see the Jesuit community all around the world trying their best to serve the poor, to teach people in education, to influence people and preach the word in media and communications. That is the glory of Jesus. In preaching God's word, in sharing the love of the Father to one another. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Mass, let the Word of God today teach us of the glory of Jesus, a glory that consists in loving the Father and in sharing to one another the love of God for us. Amen. Jesus prayed to the Father for unity. Waiting for the Pentecost, let us come to the Father and pray for the true unity among all His children. For every petition, let us say, Father of all, unite us. Father of all, unite us. That all members of the Church may be one in heart and mind, in union with our Pope and our bishops, let us pray to the Lord, Father of all, unite us, that the world may be lived in Christ by the united example of Christians. Let us pray to the Lord, Father of all, unite us, that all those baptized in Christ may be brought into the visible unity of the one Church, let us pray to the Lord, Father, Father of all, unite us, that each family may be made one in faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord, Father, Father of all, unite us, that the dead may be called to perfect union with God forever. Let us pray to the Lord, Father, Father of all, unite us, Holy Father, through these prayers, may all people be led to that unity which you share with the one you have loved before the foundation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, 
enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us through our participation in them that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now pray the seventh day of our novena to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. The gift of wisdom is nothing less than loving, contemplating, contemplative union with God, which makes it possible for us to see all things from a divine perspective. When it is understood in its full breadth, wisdom can rightly be called communion, since it is a share in divine life, a union made perfect in the truth of love. Embodying all the other gifts, as charity embraces all the other virtues, wisdom is the most perfect of the gifts. It strengthens our faith, fortifies hope, perfects charity, and promotes the practice of virtue in the highest degree. May the Holy Spirit raise up our hearts and minds to rest in God alone so that we, his people, may be living signs of a new Pentecost in our time. Let us all together pray. Father, Father who, who by, by the, the light, light of the, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit did, did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. May He permeate our thoughts, words, and actions, so that bearing witness to the gift of salvation, your Church may lead all people to Christ the way, the truth, and the life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mary, Seat of Wisdom. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, I'm not